G'day world, Chris Hogan coming to you live from Rise Conference here in Hong Kong. Thanks to our partners Invest HK and Start Me Up HK. And I'm here with Anish Shah, Director of 3 d w e a r How are you, Anish? I'm doing fine, thank you. So I understand we have uh, some advancements in 3D printing, uh, which you guys are showing off here. Can you tell me a little bit about where it's come from and where it is now? Yeah, so 3D printing actually started when people really wanted to uh, customize stuff. So we we can see that the shopping experience is already becoming like really personalized and customized. And now, as more and more people uh, want to have unique products, they're thinking about ways so that you can get more designs made. And when you're getting more designs made, you want them to be in low quantities so that it becomes cost efficient. In that, 3D printing comes into play, and we are building stuff. We are making uh, machines which. Uh, 3D print parts really, really fast. As of now, there have been other machines in the market which print something, say, in about six hours. Then we have reduced the time to as low as like 50 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And we plan on doing reducing that even further to about 2025. Also, another thing which we are really trying to do is we're trying to get the costs down for the materials as well as for the 3D printers so that a consumer can afford it. And uh, I think there will be a time like we are seeing photocopiers every. Where in the city, I think we'll be able to see 3D printers everywhere, and think the, that is the time when people will actually be able to get, you know, real-time customization on demand. Has there been a limitation as to what materials have been able to be printed previously, and is it getting easier to print different materials now too? Yes. So there are a lot of materials which can be printed, but in terms of the cost efficiency, not all of the materials can be 3D printed affordably. So as of now, that's been like changing slightly. I think in the past two years, the number of materials which have become affordable have almost tripled, and the way this is going, probably in the next five years, a lot of materials which we can't even think of printing right now. For example, uh, metal 3D printing is kind of expensive, but we are expecting in the next three years that's going to come to a point where we'll be able to like live 3D print metal. So yeah. And what about uh, human human tissue, like body tissue? Yes, that is another area where uh, a lot of uh, talk is being held about. 3D printing, human tissue, 3D printing cells. So, a part of the medical industry which has already taken that up is orthotics and prosthetics, where 3D printing has become mainstream. But tissue 3D printing is still kind of far-fetched. We'll probably see that. I don't think in the next 10 years, but maybe yeah, after that. Very good. So I understand you've uh, you've, you've printed some uh, larger items, and and uh, I mean, <laughs> now if you can see this, yes, it's uh, the Iron Man helmet. So uh, it's not uh, a protective helmet of any kind, but could, in theory, I print a custom protective helmet out of, you know, out of from this printer? Yes, yes, you could actually. So if you could somehow take a scan of your head, then they, we could be able to build helmets which are like which are protective, but they fit you so well that you know you while you're riding a bicycle you, or a bike, you won't be able to you know feel any wiggling. The helmet will like fit onto you very smoothly, and that l l kind of make the make the experience like nice. And that would allow for printing multiple materials in one solution, all infused together, or is it that you have to print the different materials separately and then uh, and then join them later? It depends on the complexity of the part. As of now, 3D printing is at a stage where in a printer you you can print a maximum of five different materials together. Yes, and uh, but we need more. So yeah, if, as of now we haven't been able to 3D print electronics along with other plastic parts. We've been able to print different kinds of plastics together. If there comes a stage where we are able to print the electronics simultaneously. So, for example, foam, the foam inside mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. would be able to be printed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Nice. And and I understand this printer is also uh, allowing, I guess, finer, finer yes. uh, printing. So you can't see this, but uh, this is a super fine. Down to how many microns? 50 microns. That's 0.05 mm. And uh, these are actually uh, rings. Jewelry. Yeah, these are jewelry prototypes. Yes. Yep. And and then you would apply the metal, gold, the the the, the molten. Could, yeah, you could electroplate this with, say, something which looks like gold. So it it will actually be plastic, but the finish will make it appear as if it's gold. So another area where this is being used is that. Uh, industries which deal with uh, high-cost materials, for example, gold, silver, and other metals, they don't really have to showcase uh, items. They don't have to keep inventory of those expensive items with them. Instead, they can 3D print in plastic, give them a 
finish of that final medal and then they, they can show that to the buyers and that will help, help them reduce the inventory. Fantastic. And, and is this the, the, the technology we're seeing on this uh, monitor just here? Yes, yes. This is the technology. It's called DLP, Digital Light Processing. Uh, let's bring this in yeah. a bit closer. Sorry, what is it called? It's called DLP, Digital Light Processing, where you put in plastic in liquid form, you subject it to ultraviolet light, the plastic solidifies, and that happens repeatedly layer over layer, and you get the final 3D printed part. Amazing. Yeah, and it looks completely different to, I guess, other 3D printers that I've seen before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the most common type of 3D printing, which is like, which everybody's talking about, is FDM. That that doesn't give you sort of like a really smooth surface finish, and this tech kind of masters in that. So it limits the area in which you can print, but whatever you are able to print within that area, it's an extremely high surface finish. Right. And I understand like other applications are very good. Uh, if we come along here, uh, uh, for example. Uh, printing uh, mechanical parts yes so 3d printing has actually been in the automotive industry for quite some time now and this is like a turbine prototype and yeah. yep so like you mentioned about helmets people are already printing parts for uh, cars for bikes and whenever you they want to design say 10 20 different kinds of models and they want to give one for production then they'll probably 3d print those 10 different parts that will help them reduce their cost and then they'll uh, finalize one of those and then they'll move that into production amazing amazing well thank you very much for your time Anish uh, you. how do people sort of I guess stay best I guess stay up to date with with this new technology sorry how do people stay up to date with this new technology? Do you have a 3dware.co.in? That's the uh, that's the website. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. And are you on social media as well? Yes, we are on Twitter. You can follow us on 3dware underscore additive. We're also on Facebook, 3dware.co.in with the same name. Yep. Yep. Great. Thanks for watching, guys. Some great funky little tech going on here. <laughs> so educational. Uh, keep watching. We're live on Facebook.com/slash Beach City Life, and we're also on YouTube and LinkedIn. Just search for Beach City. Cheers.